show you my pile of rads here. This is my piggy bank. This is a, a huge, huge pile of rads. You can't quite tell how deep it is. Man, it is deep. That's at least a tr good truckload of rads. So I had a bit of a problem today. I went to the scrapyard earlier. Dropped, all, dropped off a whole bunch of steel. Uh, made 80, 80 bucks. It was not bad. And then I picked up some scrap. Hot water tank. And a furnace. Nothing very exciting. But my problem was, is that when I was at the scrap yard, I uh, had my hitch lift on. I backed into something at the scrap yard. And uh, what happened was, I guess I, when I hit something and then I put it into it forward and I pulled ahead a little bit, it must have caught on something and it broke the, the, the winch. It's a bit of a bummer. I'm really ticked off at myself for this. So what I did is uh, I put my hitch lift, uh, after I unloaded all the scrap, I put my hitch lift, took it off, put it in the back of the truck. I have to try and fix it. So it's, the motor is fine, it's some, some sort of gear inside there. So I have to take that, take that out and take it all apart and figure out what's wrong with it. You know, it's a bit of a bummer because that thing is a lifesaver and uh, I, need to, I need it to work. Took this thing all apart, took the whole winch apart. I'll show you what has happened, is that this bracket here has been bent. It's cast aluminum bracket, it's been bent. So what happens is that these gears will no longer come in contact with those gears. The motor works. What I did is I took the whole thing apart. I just cut these wires because they're, they'll be easier to, uh, to just, you know, put heat shrink on them heat shrink them back together rather than having to disassemble everything so I just cut them and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and bend this back I'm going to show you here I don't know if you can see it but right there you can see where the it's bubbling a little bit it doesn't take much there's a gap there that's what's causing it so let's see if I can put on a put on a cinder block I'll just start banging it with a hammer, I guess, see if I can bend it back. Well, that's kind of hard to say, but I think it, I think it worked. It's nice and flat. Feels flat. There's no. There's a little bit of tipping here. And yeah, there's no more gap there. I say that pretty much worked. You know, in the future, it'll just bend again. What I should probably do is get like a flat piece of steel and try and reinforce it, you know, like just so that it can't bend anymore. So you can kind of see what happened. So these holes line up with these holes right here. So you have all of this behind, uh, up against a, a, a steel plate, except for this part. This part's exposed. And right there, that's where the holes line up. You can see where that paint chip is. So that's exactly where it bent. So that's kind of a, not a cool little design there. So if you see what I mean, this part goes onto the winch motor, just like that. This part just rests up against the plate. So you have the weight of the motor pulling, it's just going right through this bridge right here. All that weight and everything. It's just through this aluminum part. So what I'm thinking of doing is, I'm gonna cut out a piece of steel here that I have. And cut it out and drill the holes for it. I think that should be okay. Finished with my little steel plate here. So I even grinded out these two little trenches here and here because there's these nubs. And now that's probably used so that the, 
thing doesn't shift that way so it's not perfect but it will do so that's how it's going to look and so it, yeah drilling those holes out wasn't too bad used a lot of oil and i had a pretty nice bit for it so that's going to go on like that or rather this way and then so this part of it will have a nice steel plate to go on the back so that because now that this thing has bent been bent it's weaker now so this will give it a little bit more strength so that it won't bend that way again at least that's the theory and i'm going to use the same hardware i looked at it and it, it does have enough thread on the other side to to reuse it so that's good too all right going to put it all back together wish me luck yeah, so i just get it lined up and i just have to tilt it like this just make sure the receiver gets in there and boom it's a little bit low i gotta do a final adjustment on this thing but I fixed it it's working again so you can see there i put that metal plate in there so that this part has some has some uh, more support you know uh, it's kind of weird how they didn't have this extended all the way to this part like there's a big part that's not protected like it's not behind a big metal plate anyways so that's what i did last night pretty happy i got this thing fixed again because i didn't want to have to uh do something else just wanted to show you guys one other thing that i picked up yesterday this is a bunch of keys from my post office big pile of keys and this these are from the uh, post office did some renovations and they switched out all of their appeal boxes so they were collecting keys from their customers to get and give them new keys for their new box so <laughs> this is what they've done they've she just put them all in a box for me and just kept on collecting them so now i have a whole bunch of keys these are really good because uh, you can sell these on ebay i guess people buy them for arts and crafts or something Anyways, kind of nice. That one has a lock on it. Yeah, some of them have locks on it. This one's kind of neat. It's actually a pretty cool keychain. I've never seen one like that before. I think I'll keep that. Come on. Just like that. Cool. I'm going to keep that. I'll probably use it for myself. Just a few other little other bits of metal in there locks so yeah you know these things have brass there's some brass ones but a lot of them will be zinc or steel so you would have to go through them all and check each single one for if i'm for me i'm going to sell them on ebay so what i'll have to what i'll end up doing is taking off all the bits of uh, steel on them like all the rings and everything so i'm going to clean it all up and then uh uh, put in a big lot, or maybe I'll make two or three different lots of keys. Because I have a little, a small little collection in my basement as well. This is what I just picked up in my shop, guys. Three air conditioners, pretty good stuff. And has the condenser units as well. So a lot of aluminum copper rads and copper there. It's good stuff. I got a good uh, copper rad pile going on. I got called from a regular customer to come pick up some more scrap. And man, their place looks so different. So different. This used to be all big forest. So I guess they're doing a development here. Big, huge forest. This is a place, I did a video and I picked up a whole bunch of paint cans and I went through their junk piles and I found a whole bunch of stuff in their bush. It's all gone now, it's crazy. Anyway, so this is what they're giving me today. I'll take the tires as a courtesy. And then everything else is kind of good to go. Got a block here, a cast iron block. I think I have my dolly with me. I'll take that first. Just going to see what I can take today. And some other stuff in there. I don't know. Just looks like scrap steel mostly. Nothing really special, except for a little aluminum grill and that. A whole bunch of that. that. Looks like a basketball net. Oh no way! I can't take that. Look. Oh man, 
big pile of concrete on the end of it. No way. Yeah, all right, well, she said there was a big, big load. She said, make sure you bring your truck in your trailer, but you know what? Probably fit all that on there today. Well, it's not that heavy, but it's good to have this lift here. I probably could have gotten it on without it. I just turned the truck on. The motor sounds a lot happier with the truck on, believe me. It did not sound happy without it. It's the next day, I'm just cleaning up my truck right now. I'm gonna leave that cast iron block inside there. Not too sure how much money I can get from that. I'll bring that in on Monday, Saturday right now. So I think I could get, well, I'm not sure. I've never really brought one in before, but maybe let's say 10 bucks for that. That's a little bit of copper here from this bucket. Copper and brass, you know, maybe another $10 or less. Uh, it came from this bucket with a whole bunch of nails in it. There might be some more in the bottom, so I'm gonna go through it. Um, that one is just nails and other little scrap, but these ones here, these nails, uh, I actually have, it's a, a whole big bucket full now. Um, I dumped them all into a bucket. I just put them in my shed. So I got a huge pail of nails that I can reuse or sell at the flea market. Um, so that was okay. And what else did I get here? I got a little bit of aluminum there from the grill. Some steel, maybe $15 of steel. And these buckets here, this bucket and that bucket, were full of nails and motor oil and water. So I started dumping in the, out the water into the driveway and I quickly, quickly realized it was oil. So I started to curse <laughs> a little bit and I went and got my oil pan, dumped the oil into my old pan and I'll bring that in for disposal. So that was just a nice little surprise, you know? It's like, really? Do you have to do that to me? <laughs> Anyways, little, another rotor there. Not me, that's a dollar. Loading up the truck full of e-waste. I'm meeting up someone in town to sit to another Kijiji sale. A lot of TVs, printers, usual stuff. With my eight foot box, I can fit a lot more e-waste in here than my last truck. So probably get around $50 for all of this. They pay five cents a pound at the scrapyard. My Kijiji sale is a sleep apnea machine you know because what can go wrong with selling someone a sleep apnea machine I mean, this is brand new i picked i got that at the at the uh, retirement residence that uh, i did a clean out for and the person who gave it to me said it's brand new never been used um you can't sell anything like that on ebay uh only uh special Pe uh, companies with special permission, I think, can sell stuff like that on, on eBay. But uh, anyone like me can't. So I have to find someone else to buy it. So I, I put it up for $200 because it doesn't have any uh, masks or tubes or anything. It just has the power cord in there. So I put it up for 200 and a guy messaged me in, in, oh, pretty much the next day. And he said, yeah, I'll buy it. So I'm going to meet up with him. And the place I'm meeting up with him is right by the scrapyard. So I thought, hey, two birds with one stone, get rid of all this e-waste. I still have more back here. Let's get a little bit more back here. Just a few TVs and a couple of bins. So this is my basement setup right now where I do all my packaging and stuff. And last night made a few sales. Um, this thing here, I think I showed you, I think I showed it in one of my videos. I picked that up in my drop-off bin. It's a nice little radio, little alarm clock. It's called a Sony Dream Machine. So make sure you look out for that if you ever see one at the thrift, thrift store or wherever. So it has fun little dials there. It looks pretty nice. The only problem with this one is it's missing the volume knob. It's also missing battery cover there. Yeah, battery cover right there. 
So I listed that uh, for $50 on eBay and it sold within 24 hours. There are comparables that have sold online for more. I just sold mine for less because it's missing the knob and the battery cover. But it plugs it, plugs it in, works. Battery, uh, radio sounds nice. And you always, whenever you're testing these things, you want to um, turn the, the volume knob and if you hear a crackle or anything, uh, then you want to address that. You would have to clean out, there's something called a pot. Uh, the, the knob there, you just go in and clean that. And then that'll get rid of the crackling. Um, yeah, so anyways, $50. I was shocked. I was pretty happy when I saw what they were selling at. Um, they're selling for more than that, I believe. Uh, I saw a couple that have sold for closer to $70. But anyways, the guy actually sent me a message and he said uh, these things will have a problem with dimming in the dark but he wanted me to test it and but anyways he, he bought it regardless so I haven't even replied to his message yet so I'm going to reply to him uh, as soon as I'm done with this say thank you for buying it <laughs> but I'm not sure if it does dim or not in the dark I just was talking about this the other day uh, this is from the camper that I scrapped out, and this is a like water pump. So that was a pump that was taking all of the pink fluid and moving it to the toilet. Uh, so that is just from the RV, and I sold that for fifty dollars as well. Nice little sale. So I'll add that to the the uh, price, my little price list of how much I've been making off this RV. So I think I'm up to about $1,100 now for the RV on how much money I've made. I just sold this. So actually, these three things, I listed them all in the same batch, all in the same day. So these, oh, maybe not this one actually. I think that one was a couple, last week or so. But anyways, these two for sure. Uh, these are some reel-to-reel -reel tapes that I picked up at a garage sale. I think I picked up for super cheap. I'm not sure if they have recordings on them at all, but there are, I think nine, one, nine or so, and there, there's actually two empty, two empty spools that I made sure I, I said in the listing. So there's a couple empty ones, and then there's a five-inch one, and then the rest are seven inches with tape on it. So twenty-seven dollars for all that. I sold a couple things from Kijiji that I have to ship out. This is the toilet from the RV camper, and I sold it for $30 uh, plus $20 for the shipping. Um, so we agreed uh, with him $50 total, and I'm shipping out to Toronto. Not sure how much it's going to cost me for the shipping. I don't think it's going to cost me $20, probably a little bit less, even though it's a big, big box. Uh, this is the only box I had. It was pretty banged up, so I put another piece of cardboard on top tape that down yeah so that's the toilet i have the inside the toilet is wrapped around with another piece of cardboard and one thing of bubble wrap and uh, then i put newspaper all around it kind of keep it steady so it's you know double boxed more or less so that's fifty dollars and this is seventy five dollars total and this i'm shipping this out to manitoba these are hatches from the rv just little axis hatches so same thing, I, he asked me about shipping, and I said, well, I'm asking, uh, my ad was asking, the, I think it was $20, $20 each, and he wanted three of them, so I said, I'll do it for 75 and he said, yep, so I shipped that out today, it's got all this yucky caulking that never dries, and you get that stuff on your clothing, and it will never come off. Guys, I want to introduce you to my new dog, we got a new dog, hey buddy. Hero! <laughs> He's such a good dog. Anyways, this is, uh, where did we get him? Facebook. My wife saw him on Facebook. Of someone was looking to rehome him because he was outliving the space where he was living. They were living in some sort of housing project. They got him as a puppy. And he's great Pyrenees. These dogs need space. So he was barking at everybody walking around. They said they had to get rid of him. So anyways, he's 
He's really, really good. He was kind of, I don't know what the situation that he came from, but he's just so well behaved. He's so good. Uh, except we can't put him off leash outside because he just runs away, but these dogs are known for that. And he doesn't respond to his name. He can't call him. <laughs> he just looks at you. He does like, I'm not going over to you. What are you, crazy? Anyways, great Pyrenees. They got these funny claws. These dew claws. Supposedly that's for when they were uh, climbing mountains because they're, they're like sheep dogs, herd, herding dogs. Anyways, he's so good. Hey, eh? look at the size of his head. He's just giant. You're a giant, giant dog. At first we got him and we're like, oh my gosh, he's just so big. And we really were not sure about him. We're like, because we, the people said, try him out for a week. If it doesn't, if you don't like him, you can return him sort of thing. But, uh, uh, so we weren't too sure first couple days, but, oh, he's just such a good dog. Really happy about it. So we're keeping him. And we've changed his name. His name was Kevlar, just like the bulletproof vest. Supposedly because these dogs are bulletproof. <laughs> so we changed it to Hero. So we like Hero a lot better. But it doesn't matter because you call him, you can call him all day. He'll never come. And he's really good outside. I had because we keep him on a, on a, we, we tie him up outside and he'll uh, just bark at any everybody. And so he's just a good guard dog. Good. Uh, it feels really good to have some sort of security. You know, so I've been thinking about that, about getting cameras or something. We haven't had any problems out here, but you just never know. And so, ever since we got him, I just feel a whole lot better. Um, yeah, so he's just giant. Look how big he is. He's about the height of my table, and he's not even full grown. You're nine months old. Nine months old. You're a puppy. You're a puppy. Eh? Oh my gosh. So, that's him. Our other dog, Haley, doesn't really like him too much, but she's just old and cranky. The cats are getting used to him, and the, he chases the chickens around a lot. So, they're not, but they can get away, it's just fine. Uh, he's, he's not really, he, he would never eat anybody, or eat anything, but he is pretty mouthy when he plays, so the kids are getting chewed up a little bit. But he put his, I was playing with him a little bit, and his jaw literally fit all the way around my thigh. It was a bit scary. So he's not even full grown yet. He's gonna, they say they can reach about 130 pounds and about uh, 32 inches high, which is about the height of a doorknob. <laughs> hey, oh my gosh. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm gonna finish packaging that and then go to the post office. Well, I sold this Lego set today uh, Lego Mindstorm. Look out for this stuff. It's pretty good stuff. It's uh, sought after, it's expensive, and it's not just for the kids. You know, it's 10 up. 10, each is 10 and up. So, um, it's pretty neat. Uh, it's a little robot you can build. I bought this at a at my thrift shop that we go to. It's like a country th thrift shop. They get a lot of neat stuff, and they sell it pretty cheap, too. So, I bought this for $40. And... I sold it today for 120. There you go, 120, and then they paid 48 dollars for shipping. It's going to the United States of America, California. So, when I sell something that um, is going out that far with that high of shipping, what that tells me is that I underpriced it because I was picturing I would sell this more locally, you know, especially around Christmas time. Um, but I did a lot of research on it, you know, I did a lot of comparables, and I thought 120 was, uh, was pretty high, but obviously they paid $50 for shipping, so, um, you know, I could probably could have, uh, put it a little bit higher, but no worries, I'll take 120 so that's a nice little profit of, uh, what, $80? That's good. So, that's all complete, and, uh, the, everything's in little bags, it even has, like, the warning suffocation thing on it 